I talk a little Flyers hockey. The, uh, the how, horribly how did we get here? Yeah, yeah. How, how did we, we get how here? How did we get here? Well, you know what? I think the problem is, I think when you have a team like this in, in a salary cap era, is you can't be wrong mm-hmm. about what happened. So the Nolan Patrick first. I don't. Oof. I can go back well before that. Yeah. Um, everybody kind of gives like you know like they look at the like the team. First of all, one team wins, right? Right. At the end of the year, and, and 30 others saw some teams go home, and they're trying to retool to figure out what happened, whether you're the last place team in the league or you were eliminated in the semis of the, of the playoffs. But I look back at the Flyers. First of all, many things have happened here. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, young, the, the core of guys they have here, as advertised, were not as good as, as advertised. I agree. Um, Provorov, Konechny, they're not, they're not bad players. Don't get me wrong. But they're not Kale McCarr. Right. And Nathan McKinnon. That's why the Patrick miss to me became such a big thing because yeah. you've essentially had the two, the number two pick, and all four of the next five guys are all all ended up being really will have amazing NHL careers. A couple of guys stumbled this, like Pedersen had a rough year this year in Vancouver, not that by the standards he had. The uh, so then you combine so then you combine a bad product. You had you've had Carter Hart too, who I think is a good goalie, and I and I think he's going to build himself up again with the right coach in here to kind of rebuild wherever whatever is going on up there. Mm-hmm. But when you see that much that rubber coming at you and that many chances coming at you, um, it, you're you're not going to get helped a lot, right? Yeah. Like there's a lot of deficiencies here. I mean, you had Keith Keith Yandel this year. No disrespect to him. I know he's a great guy. Um, he shouldn't have been playing in the league this year. I mean, no offense to him. I mean, he may be the power play, but I mean, he was minus 41, 42, something yeah. like that. Oh yeah, Baller. you know those. And again, he's had an amazing career. He played over a thousand games. It would be like me saying in my last year that I should have been playing. I shouldn't have been playing, but I was still in the league, and I probably wasn't good good enough, or at the time even physically good enough to be playing at that time. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of things happened uh, in the years, but to me the biggest part, the biggest problem with this whole Flyer team is the problems and the animosity they've created themselves with their own fan base. Yeah, and that's the business side. I mean, like when you look at what they've done in Philadelphia, doing things for. The, the sheer purpose of just doing them like okay so you come out it started off the business side wanted to put an implant uh, you know like their handprint on what's going on here so let's remove the statues yeah we'll start cleaning statues out of the, the side of the building um and then we're going to start firing alumni we're going to yeah. start making all these changes we're going to start uh turning the history of this team of what was once great by a private owner that loved his fans and his players and the community more than anything you put a corporation in and they've destroyed the fabric of what Philadelphia Flyers organization is. You know, I've said during the year, you can be a, sh- you can be a shitty team. It happens. Right. But you cannot devolve into a shitty organization. 100%. And that's what's happened. And until somebody decides that they need to take this horse by the, by the reins and, and make the change and say, let's get rid of whatever this is, it's not working. It's not working. So, you know, I mean, look at guys. I mean, yeah, Riley, you were there in 2006, six seven. Mm-hmm. I mean... They were the worst team in the league, the yep. Flyers. It was my first year out of hockey. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> they were still getting 19,000 people a game. Yeah, yeah. I, I've said that, too. Yeah. We were, in the 40 years of the team, it was the worst year, but the place was sold out every night. Uh, and the other thing, too, and, and, and I say this, you know, and, and, because I don't think it's it's a huge issue, but it's something that they have to, to repair. The physicality of the league has hurt attendance, whether they want to believe it or not. The lack of physicality. Right, 100%. Uh, you know, the, I mean, you hear it from the pundits, the hockey people, and someone's going to say, oh, look at these old dinosaurs. No. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. It's what's sold. It's yeah. what worked. Yeah. They had a beautiful blueprint of an amazing league that forced you to compete, forced yeah. you to be competitive. Um Fans were sitting on a powder keg every night. That doesn't mean that we are advocating for line brawls or bench brawls. I'm not. Yep. I'm advocating and asking and demanding that they find a way to increase the competitiveness in the league, in a league that's no longer competitive. I love the Stanley Cup playoffs right now. Guys, yeah. the regular yeah. season is a disgrace. I it's becoming like the NBA. Yeah. And if they don't be careful, the Philadelphia Flyers standard, whether they have a good team or not, is never going to fill that building ever again. I don't care what the level of talent is like. And let me have a Stanley Cup winning team, but you got to get it right. Yeah. And right now, the crap they're selling, the gritty, the extra gritty, yeah, all yeah. the other, all that stuff. Nobody wants that. You know what they want? A they want to talk to the guy in their seats. <laughs> they want a good team. They want to see a hard nosed Philadelphia team because that's what this city's been about blue collar, hard nosed. They, sure. they want a Stanley Cup in the infancy of their franchise, and that's transcended through generations. Yeah. Um, and you know what else? They want to listen to organ music. They want to talk to their people, the, the guy next to them at games. They yeah. just want to go watch a hockey game. They don't want to see some big giant, 
you know, uh, orange mascot obstructing their view yeah. and trying to put a focus on himself. Yeah, right. You know, so grow up, get with the picture. <laughs> and the people that do work in the corporate side, they probably shouldn't be. If they're not from Philadelphia. This is a unique, special sports town. I agree. And you can't have people from the outside coming in here and putting their handprint on it when they have absolutely zero clue what they're doing. And those people have zero clue what they're doing. Yeah, you, you know, you, you said so many, you know, real things there. And do you think they deliberately yep. blew up the culture of Flyers? I do. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it the, almost the lady seems that like runs it. Valerie Camille. I mean, she when she came in, she she said, "Flyers fans will have to adapt." Yeah. What does that mean? Adapt to what? To your handprint putting put on the team? I don't know. I mean, I don't know what that means. Does it mean we're gonna drape? We're gonna put a, a drape over a statue and then rip it out and bring it out? You know. And then have an entire community try to get it in their towns. Yeah, <laughs> it's almost yeah, because it yeah. almost seems like, deliberately done to erase the history of the Flyers, so they could put this new corporate, new age but f- that, fingerprint on it. But like, there's got to be a way to 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 have both, like still preserve the alumni and and honor them, have them around the rink. They don't even want to come anymore. Well, the alum, yeah, the, you're right. The alumni doesn't really. I mean, I know they're trying to do stuff. And Brad Marshy does a great job. Amazing job. Like I said this year, guys. Let's be honest with you. I think the Flyers organization themselves, like in the business, I know that you know they're they're still there and they're going to run their team how they run it. But f- for the alumni events, uh, the Hall of Fame um, weekend in the game. Uh, just get out of the way. Let the alumni people handle it that know what they're doing. Right. Don't, don't try to be involved anymore. Um, I think a lot of those people are more there for their photo ops than they are anything else. Sure. Um, someone said, <laughs> remind them of a human photo, a walking photo op. <laughs> yeah. It's like, here, let me jump in any picture I get into. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know what? It's, it's, it's this, this organization's about way more than that. And um, I, I know at the end of the year, I think they tried to do some things differently. Uh, but it looked like it was just because a bunch of people were complaining about it. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, let's try something different. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Uh, the essence of the Flyers is, has been lost. and It kills the fan base. It kills the fan base. Yeah. And then again, the product on the ice, like there's, there's no identity. Losing games happens, but like you, you can lose a right way and you can lose a wrong way, you know? And I think like there was no fight, not even without the fighting. It was like, there's just no fight uh, Yeah, and even all. Atkinson said, like, they're too easy to play against. Too easy. The team and, 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 you know, and then people go down. They don't want to, you know, and then, and then the Flyers were dealing with stuff too in the city stuff this year, like with the uh, the Vax cards and, and the right. yeah, and stuff. And, and don't think for a second that didn't hurt. That absolutely hurt. Yeah, sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I went down to the Thanksgiving Day game, guys, the Black Friday game, yeah. and I drove in with my son and, and Rick, my buddy, you guys know, and I left. There was a thousand people waiting at the door to get in. I'm like, I'm not staying here. <laughs> The first really? period, the first period oh, was five minutes. They, had to get through. they oh, were yeah, checking yeah. everything, oh, yeah, right. the, right. the, the digital tickets. Yeah. And I left. Hmm. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not staying for this. So we went and ate Mexican food. There you go. And watched it on TV. And watched it. <laughs> like guacamole. Uh, I wanted to ask your opinion. Uh, if, if Ellis hadn't gotten hurt and Coots, say those two, t- those two guys, how different is the season? They're closer, but they're still down at the bottom of the right. pack. Yeah, I agree. I don't, I mean, you know, you're talking about a Ryan Ellis if you got the kid healthy all year. You know, I'm, yeah, we're a better team with him. We're a better team with Coots. I still don't think that that would have made them a top six team. I, I agree. It yeah. does, it, I don't think it mattered. Yeah. And I said, like, I mean, I've been, I've been pretty straightforward. I mean, I even said it maybe, maybe that's why I'm not working there anymore. But, I mean, I've said, like, they should have, they probably should have in terms of what they were at for re, re, rebuilding or retooling. To me, I mean, I know some people would say you're crazy for saying it. I think some people are saying you're right. They should have traded Giroux five years ago. Five years ago, yeah. Yep. He was here at the time for seven or eight years already. Yeah. Um, you'd had a glimpse already of the five previous playoff windows. And I think that just, just for an asset retention, right. if you're going to trade, I'm not saying get rid of him for any kind of personality thing. Maybe four, right? So you go back, but you're saying there came, but there came a window. And I know you couldn't get him to easily buy into that because he had a, that no okay. movement. Mm-hmm. And he was not willing to move that. I mean, there's a way around that if you, you know, if your GM's, you know, really wants to move a guy, I think he can. But I think that's where it had to start. And the, the, you know, to me, that's where the retool had to begin because I think with a guy like that, the assets you could get at a point where his peak is so high. Yeah. Uh, I was always worried about the younger guys coming up with G. This is nothing about G and his talent or what he's done in Philadelphia. He's had a wonderful career here. I always just felt like he was far enough along with Voracek where the other guys were still trying to catch up as they were newcomers in the league. Mm-hmm. So there was that separation in a lot of ways. Interesting. Um, yeah. yeah, I just just from an asset, just from trying to get yeah. assets back or, or younger players getting younger. 
And I know it's a hard thing to do. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. You so know, what if he'd won three cups, you know, nobody was trading Crosby, but that wasn't the case. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. So what does a retool look like this yeah. this off season? Like, what does that look like in your eyes? Because I mean, that word, word keeps to be thrown around. Well, I'm a I'm a believer more in a rebuild. Rebuild, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Well, a rebuild means so when I look at a rebuild, I actually look at the Rangers in a lot of ways, and they got a little bit lucky. Like they had to go get Panarin. They mm-hmm. made a trade. Remember, I was saying like getting rid of uh, guys like a, a Zabanajad came in a few years ago. Yeah. yeah. That was a guy that they kind of kept in. They knew he'd be a long term piece, and you have to have one of those. I think coming in, Panarin became a good piece. Fox ended up coming out and being like a revelation in yeah, a lot of ways. 100%. Um, uh, Jacob Truba had a better year this year than he did previously. And then, you know, like Shesterkin, they got, you know, what you yeah. think is the uh, the mirror replica, what you're hoping in Carter Hart, right? Shesterkin yeah. had an amazing year. He may even win the Hart Trophy. There's right. people talking about He won't, but, yeah. but he's going to be up he's there. In the top the, yeah. So I think that's what it looks like, but you have to be patient. And I think you have to let the fan base know that, hey, this is the path we're traveling right now. Yeah. You got to be careful. There's the, the, the word, like, I don't know if GMs think about it. The word retool is completely different than rebuilt. Yeah. You know, when you, I don't know if the fans here want to hear about a retool. Yeah, <laughs> smoke and mirrors, right? Like, we've been retooling here for eight years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're better off being honest with them and you know, just I've, being, listening to yeah, and rebuilding. I, and, I, and I've watched every bit of it, you know, from like right. broadcasting. I've sat ringside, I've sat in the, I haven't missed a Flyers game since 1995, wow. 94, you know, and so that's, that's why I have an opinion on it. And that's the things I've seen. I'm not a GM. Some GM may tell me to go pound sand somewhere. I don't care, but I've been around. I have a hockey opinion like you guys do, and mm-hmm. and those are the things that I think I would have done. And yeah. I think that uh, you know that I think that they just I think they just kept spinning their wheels for too long. Yeah, and I think that uh, that 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 was one of the problems. Yeah. yeah, with with the free agent free agency this summer, like, mm-hmm. what are you targeting Johnny Gaudreau? I'm not. Um. But I mean, again, you know, you need to get guy get your points right. Like, you gotta right. have a skilled player in here. Yeah. I, I'm just thinking, like, I'm I'm looking along the lines of like I'm a, I'm I'm looking forward to having Couturier back. Right. You know, that's a guy like I really think he's he's like a, a primo Carnera up front. Mm-hmm. I, I I love like Johnny Gaudreau's had a great a really good playoff. It's been a, it's you know, and he'd been questioned before years right. before about whether you know what kind of a playoff player he was. He had an amazing year this year. Uh, I'm not even sure he's the best player on that line. Right to be on between Elias Lindholm and uh, and Matthew Kachuk, you right. know they do a lot of heavy lifting. Sure, he does a lot yeah. of the setup. But you know, I want a guy. I, I I'm looking guys like somebody that set the tone, barrel right through the middle of that ice, get to the net, change the mindset of the team. You know, as we said, too easy to play this year. I'm a big. I like big center icemen. Yeah, uh, guys that get through, play the body. I yeah. mean, yeah. What I I shouldn't say I don't want him here. I don't. I don't know what's out there, Riley, and I don't know really yeah, what know guys' either. chances are in terms of where they want to go. It yeah, makes right. sense because he's from here. Right. Um, that's a lot of money, though. Again, is Johnny Gaudreau, if you overpay him, which you will, or you maybe pay, give him a fair contract, you make a lot of money, come here. Is he going to make this team immediately a playoff contender? I don't think so. Yeah. I don't know, but I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, there's probably very few players that would do that, right? With Free, this group With this right group now. right now, yeah. I mean, and, and, you know, like Mike Yo at the end of the year, I mean, you can say what you want about the coach. Mike Yo, not me or not you guys. He said Scotty Bowman and Toe Blake couldn't win with this team. Right? Yeah, right. He did say he that. He did say that. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's an indictment. You're basically telling your GM you got a terrible team here and we weren't going to win with it. Yeah. I didn't – no one else said that. He didn't. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, if you're – so, if you're going to have – so, is Barry Trotz the modern-day version of Toe Blake or Scotty Bowman? He might be. Mm-hmm. So, why would you want him here? Yeah, yeah, right. He's not going to win with these guys. Yeah. Well, I'd say, where, where, do, you, where do you think the, the coaching change is headed? There's a few names thrown around. You said Barry Trotz. Yeah, Barry Trotz will be one of them. Yeah. You know, uh, I know, like John Torrellos. Talk. 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 I, I mean, do you, th- talk you think bringing back to. some Flyers culture in, in, into the mix, or is it. I like talk. You know, yeah. he's been around. Like, it's not like he's been implanted here for this whole year and now they're going to elevate him to coach. I mean, he's been in Arizona. He's yeah. been, he's been yeah. one Pittsburgh. Stanley Cups in Pittsburgh, you know. So, you know, I think he's he's got a good, pretty good pulse on. On what he has, I think you know a lot of coaches now. Guys get hired. If you talk to GMs, they they hire coaches now tailored to, you know, work with with the modern day athlete. Hundred percent, right? Yeah. That's you know, true. Better yeah. communicators, more like you know, like when I used ground to, level. We had a bad game. I'd have a GM call me and be like, "You were horse shit last night, and I don't want to fucking ever see it again." <laughs> yeah. Now, if a guy has a rough game, he's like, "Hey, is everything okay? Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll can I help you? Remember, like, Clark- what- Clarky coming down the one night <clears throat> telling you guys you better put wheels on your homes because I'll get rid of every fucking one of you. Every one of you guys should buy a trailer yeah. and get fucking wheels on it. Yeah. You're That's all great. in motion. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, I was rough. I mean, yeah, like a GM, like come down to the locker. I remember one time he came down, he ragged like ten guys, and I was sitting there, and I'm like, oh, boy, I hope I get away with this. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, right. I just kind of side stuff. So I'm sitting next to the jardin, right? Get my, we're half dressed. We played Dallas that night. We that was a twelve in a row that we'd lost it back in '99, oh I think, or going into the 2000 playoffs. <laughs> and he gets around, and I'm just trying to like keep my head down, like look at the curve, you know? <laughs> and he and all I sudden I hear, and fucking you, Bundy. He goes, poor Desjardins having to play with you every night. <laughs> and I'm like, God damn I'm it. like, Damn it. I thought I was hiding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. oh man, that was classic. I, I, I remember him coming in. Uh, it got so bad with the Phantoms. He actually came down. Homer brought him down, Clarky, to talk the one oh, yeah. day when we had Pavel Brendel. Oh. And we had these. we had this one kid, Pletka, who had a lot of skill. I actually think he scored the one game he got called up he actually scored his name was uh his last name was pletka and anyway he clarky comes down everybody's in the room trainers everyone and he just goes okay first off guys pletka you're done he goes go upstairs diana will give you uh everything you need you're going home you quit on this team you're out of here and we're and i got everybody's attention right and he goes and he looks over at pav pavel brendel and goes and pav pavel you're on fucking speed dial kid like that, and and, Brent, and Brindle goes like he goes, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm glad he didn't see that. He gave him the old, you know. Oh, yeah, and, he had the worst but, attitude. But eh? uh, yeah, yeah, he was, yeah, he was bad. But uh, I remember Johnny Leclerc one night. We were going out, <laughs> going out on the ice, and it was yeah. I sit and wait, like you know, the guys are, are huddling, waiting to go up for warm up, and, and Brendel's there, and he's like, <laughs> and Johnny, and Johnny Leclerc goes, come on, boys. <laughs> Let's feed off of Pavel's energy for this one tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Is that not the truth? Too, though? This oh, guy didn't give a fuck about anything, man. 